In this video, I try my hand at painting a 3D canvas, a semi-spherical acrylic bowl, in order to create the illusion of a painting you can literally step into. This is an acrylic dome, which sort of front on looks fairly flat, but when you reach in or look in, you notice that it's definitely not flat. And I wanna paint a scene in this so that when you place your head in a certain position, it brings the whole scene to life. And first things first, we need to make a stand for this so I can actually paint on it. So I'm gonna get Murray's help to see if we can secure this ready for painting. All right, it is time to make a thing for Jazza. And I have a rough sketch, as we can see here, Wood. Aha! Uh -huh. Fishbowl. And here we're cutting it out. Now, thanks to Murray, I have a very robust stand for my spherical painting, and I also realized I have a really great grid to follow for reference. My faux brick wall, which is also the acoustic paneling in this room, it's a set of very convenient, straight, horizontal and vertical lines that I can use as a reference. So now you're looking through the first person perspective. So basically I can follow these lines as a reference for battlements of a car so we can look out over the edge of an expanse, a big landscape. Then I just need some things between the midground and the foreground. And I thought that these C stands would be pretty good references. Because of these overhanging bars, I can also create a sort of archway that I can reference for the opening looking out at the view. Now from where you're looking, it just looks like the lines, but if you get closer, and sort of look up, you'll see that we'll be able to paint the full archway of the perspective. There's quite a lot that you'll see. So let's chuck some adventurers in our scene, shall we? Hey, Jen. Mm. Are you busy? Yeah, really busy. Too busy to wear a costume for 10 minutes? <sighs> nah. Okay, let's go. <laughs> hey, Tom. Yes? You know how they say not all heroes wear capes? And you know how I always tell you you're my hero? Today you get to wear a cape. Okay. Let's go. It's adventure time. Well, so what I'm thinking is, Tom, I'll get you here. I reckon if you're like facing more towards it and like shouting like, we're under attack or something like that, okay. you'll be on the inside of the archway. You'll be at the outside. And I'm thinking if you're like standing, looking up with the sword out, cause I'll put a big old dragon there in front of you. Now, this was a really tricky process. I had to close one eye and keep my head as still as possible because moving even millimeters moved those lines away from where I'd traced them. So I was constantly resetting myself back into position and occasionally needing to reposition my models back into where I had originally traced them. With that as a template in place, I can put my head exactly where the perspective will be and draw the outline of the environment around them. All right, I think this is actually really starting to work. Let's see if I can give you a first person perspective. So this is roughly where my eye was. And as you can see, the lines of my perspective generally follow the lines of these bricks as I sort of look around, even towards the ground. And as you can see, like even just doing this with the camera, you can get this real feel for being in a place and looking around. The grid has served me as much as it can serve me now. So I'm gonna head over to this white expanse so I can just have a clearer backdrop behind me. Next, I need to retrace all this drawing that I've done on the outside because I need to be able to sand the inside so my acrylic paint will stick to it and then I need to paint. I'm gonna start in the very distant background and work my way to the foreground. I'm going to find where the horizon is, doing a rough sketch of where I'll put some mountains and some scenery and bringing the depth of our environment to life. Now this first layer goes down pretty thin. I had originally sort of wondered if it would be best to work with oil paints, which like in Bob Ross paintings, you can do the whole thing in sort of one layer. But I thought it'd be best to work with this Scale Color Artist acrylic paint, which is really matte. And even though it dries a lot quicker, I want to use that to my advantage and work in layers to sort of build up texture and detail. Cool. 
So after putting down one layer and giving it a really solid drying session with a heat gun, I come in for the second layer and focus on blending and smoothing out these transitions and then slowly building up vibrancy and contrast. As you can see with the colors, I really have just gone as colorful as I can. I want this whole thing to be really immersive and vibrant. I mean, what's the point of making a three-dimensional world you can sort of step into if it isn't something awe-inspiring or that you don't see every day? So a glowing amber sun-rising sky with lavender mountains and cool blue shadows and massive vast fields of trees working their way towards the foreground gives me a huge mix of colors, ranging from yellow to orange, lavender, purple, blues, and then greens in the mid-ground. Okay, so I've come back, it's the next day, and I'm feeling really good about this, mainly because I walk into the room and as soon as I start approaching the piece, it starts enveloping me. Even like the way it sort of warps into your view and beckons you in is really exciting. Also, I'm really proud of the environment so far, just as a painting in itself. But now I'm gonna work on doing all of the castle around it. And I wanna work with the lighting that I've set up in here and making sure I'm working with shadow and maybe adding other light sources to make this whole piece feel really immersive. starting off with just a base layer on all of the castle surfaces, but also outline the key lighting areas. Because I'm focusing on some really rich ambient lighting with that sunrise off in the background, I wanna make sure to emphasize that with shadows in the scene and accurate lighting on the surfaces wherever possible to make this as immersive as I can. Also starting to allude to and leave areas on the inner castle wall for where I can put some fire later and emphasize an internal light source inside the castle. Now before moving on to any finalizing or detailing, I want to redefine where those areas of detail are. From the arrangement of the bricks all around the castle to the direction and layout of the floorboards on the ground. Now onto the next layer, and for this step, I'm gonna take every section to completion, starting off with the front of the battlements of the castle, slowly introducing some natural stony texture with the brush strokes, and picking up some shadows and highlights as I go. Next come the floorboards, and this is gonna be particularly tricky because I want it to all look like one surface, and it's gonna be hard to do that where there's clearly a really distinctive shadow line, and I don't want it to look like separate objects, but I really wanna push it into the background visually and focus more on that warm wood feel. After a couple of layers for both of these and muting those original lines, I go in with a thin brush and alternate the tone of my wood colors to create alternating plank colors. Now onto the stonework inside our castle structure. As you can see, my washed out base color is much lighter than everything ends up, but it gives me a really solid area to sort of work on top of and then build contrast into. Like I did with the battlements, slowly introducing that rocky texture and then working my way towards slowly mixing in subtle oranges as we slowly paint towards where the fire source is gonna be. And then it's a matter of going throughout the rest of my castle wall and adding the final textures and details and the the nice golden glowing highlights of the edges facing our sunrise. Last but not least, to finish off our environment, I go back to the background where I have those trees and add some nice mid-green and then light sap green highlights on the tree branches to again accentuate that sunrise off in the distance. After two full days painting this, my brain is slowly breaking, but also my mind is being blown. Like it works so well. And I'm really particularly proud of the difference in lighting between the outer castle wall area, the cool of the shadow, and then the warmth of the shadows in the internal stonework reflecting the fire. Separate to the experiment of this whole dome painting thing, this is one of my most proud paintings. Like I'm really proud of having taken taken my time to really focus on the lighting and the environment and how that all plays into each other to make it an immersive scene. I really hope that you're enjoying this video. It's certainly hard work to pull off, but I think I'm pulling it off and I really hope it's entertaining you.
And if you love my content and you'd like to support what I do, check out the jazzastudios.com shop. I've got custom Photoshop brushes and an awesome digital painting course, and I've just released my character design video masterclass, a really extensive guide to character design, which is something I'm most known for on this channel. And I go into real depth, including all of the lessons on all of the character design material I've ever put together in my book and in my online classes, including a huge amount of new material to help you take your character design to the next level. So check it out, jazzastudios.com. Whether you get something for yourself or simply hit like or leave a friendly comment down below, thank you so much for being a part of this community and supporting what I do. So with that said, it's time to jump back into our painting. But let's start off by finishing off the last pieces that we have unpainted in our canvas here. Now all the previous areas I've painted so far covered a lot more space and detail that was sort of spread around. These two characters are a much more key focal point, so obviously taking up a lot less space, but gonna need a lot of attention to detail and their lighting. Starting off with the male figure in the foreground on the left and putting down the base colors of all of the different areas to act as a foundation. And this is the scariest phase because it looks the ugliest. Just that thin, not quite opaque layer of paint in all the areas makes it look really flat and makes me really worried about what it's gonna end up looking like. But it's the next stage where I go section by section once that first layer is dried and slowly build up the detail and the lighting and the form to make it look immersive and three-dimensional. Now on to our female adventurer standing atop the battlements looking over the horizon. And like with our other character, starting for that base layer that makes everything look a little bit uncertain and scary, and then slowly rebuilding my confidence as I go in with the coming layers to add the finishing details in the texture and contrast. I am loving how this is all looking and I have alluded all the way along to putting a dragon in here which I'm going to do next but I want it to be more of a garnish to the whole piece because this is all working so well for me so I want the dragon to be something that brings it all together but doesn't take away from everything that I've so carefully built up over many days of painting this so far. Now, even though it is technically finished, it's not quite finished yet because as you can see, it's still a little bit see-through. So what I need to do next is paint the reverse of my semi-sphere here, just to make sure I can block out light, but back it with gold and oranges for the skies, lavenders for the mountains, oranges and greys for the castle, and so on. Now there's a few key areas I just wanna make sure to manually block off, such as the armor that has reflectiveness, and I don't want it to see through to any unpredictable colors. But aside from those few key areas, the rest I can block out from behind with colored aerosols to create a solid color backing to suit the general areas behind all the of the painting that I've done. And finally, with my painting fully blocked with the right colors from behind, it is now done, ready to frame and bring you into the immersive acrylic dome painting that I've created. A whole world that you can now enter and be immersed in with me. And here it is, my finished 
Dome painting. I went into this having no idea if I could pull it off. Now I want to give credit to Stephen Novak who made a TikTok that popped up in my feed that actually inspired me doing this in the first place. So he's done a few of these dome paintings and in his TikTok he sort of showed how he creates this whole laser pointing system to really accurately map the 3D space outside of the acrylic dome into the acrylic dome to create really immersive 3D paintings. And while I don't think I have the laser accuracy of someone experienced. As a first attempt, I'm incredibly proud of how this turned out and just really enjoying that feeling of having a piece of art that really interacts with you as you move around it. Like when you're further away and you walk into the room and you walk towards it. This has been a real adventure. On a canvas I have zero experience with and an outcome I'm really proud of. Please hit the like button, it really helps out the channel. And of course, consider subscribing. I love tackling all sorts of art challenges, taking risks and uh, seeing where we end up. Because sometimes, if you put the work in, even the unexpected approaches can turn into a grand adventure. Thanks for watching.